Hello, welcome to the Curtain Boutique. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making a pair of interlined pinch pleat curtains. Today you're going to need an iron, your pins, needle and thread, scissors, your ruler, pen and a good tape measure. Now I'm just doing one whip, so I've laid it all on the bench, face down. So we've got this lovely, lovely print today, which is a new one from Prestigious. This is going to be going in the shop as a sample, so I'm just going to make one whip and hang it from a pole. And I'm going to do interlined pinch pleats. I'm going to do all hand sewn so that you learn how to do a professional job. So first of all, I'm going to turn up about eight inches. Now you can do six, but because I've got quite a lot of fabric to play with, I'm going to do eight because it gives a really nice heavy hem. So I've turned up eight inches. And then what you then do is press this bottom bit. And then I'm going to pull this back on itself and then take the very end and press it or place it on the crease of the um, curtain and then fold it back up so this is the, the four inch it's a four inch double hem to keep that in place What I'm going to do then is turn my sides in. Now I don't want to take too much from my sides. I'm just going to sort of take about, to the salvage, it's sort of about five. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then press it. And what I do is I tend to follow the um, the pattern so like I've got a foot there you can see that close up you've got the foot and then I'll go on to the other foot and then I'll make it so that the foot is leveling up you know because um, it's really good to keep keep your pattern really the same all the way up which it is and I'll do the other side but what I'll do on the corner so we've got the corner, we've got it um, folded in five centimetres from the salvage edge to the edge. So I'm now going to show you how to do the mitre. Now what you do is you get hold of the um, corner, that hold your fabric like this, push it sort of inwards a little bit to give you more room, and then take this out just so you've got half and half. Um, and then what you're then going to do is the line that you've made here and here are going to need to be lined up with the bottom of the curtain and the side crease of the curtain so like that would be the bottom crease there you line that up with this crease and this crease you line up with the side crease so you hold those in place and then you fold back your five centimeters here and then you fold back your hem Hold your mitre and then pull that out and that is your perfect mitre and your, your lining will come along here so it will, you won't see this the lining will come up to here and along here so what you then do now we're going to obviously usually if it's if I'm just making a curtain without interlining I would pin it and then and then herringbone all the way down the side and then um, along the bottom but because I'm interlining it I, I'm going to be putting the interlining in before I actually sew. So let's go to the next stage. So now we're on to the interlining so we bring it up, um, bring the interlining right up to the end where the fabric is and about two, two inches below the actual drop of the curtain. So let's get that 
all the way along here, which is flat and straight. Now interlining quite often has a mind of its own, so you do have to do a bit of fluffing. Right, so we pull back the whole of the, um, the hem. We've got it all nice and flat, and then push the first part up. Fold the first part up, I meant. <laughs> push, fold it so that it's over top. Right, and then fold it again, making sure you've got your finger against the interlining and you're pressing the interlining into the crease so that there's no gaps or, you know, to keep it nice and flush so that when you press on the bottom of your curtain it's, you can feel the interlining right at the bottom because you don't want to have any gaps because um, it will look unsightly so make sure you go right along get your crease press your interlining into the crease all the way along okay going to get some pins right so now you're going to pin this in place this is where you're going to sew so you're pinning it along I find pinning perpendicular is better because it doesn't move it will stay right where you put it so now we're going to do the mitre bit so what we're going to do is let's take that pin out actually for a minute so we can unravel the corner. So we push the corner forward and we're going to, well, because obviously you've got your lines there and I know where my lines are, but you can finger press the line in so you can see it. And then there, there's the line there. Now you, Usually you bring your fabric, this fabric is a little bit lower than the line. It's only because it was a bit sort of off when I had it sent to me. So I just straightened it up myself, but obviously... Stop waffling, Sandy. <laughs> right, so this line is in line with the finger pressed side interlining. And that one is in line with that finger pressed interlining. So we're then going to pull this up and pull this in. Hold on to the corner, and there is your mitre. Now, you can take some of the bulk out, but I actually like to keep it in because I think it gives a good sort of like um, weight to it, a nice weight to the corner. Helps the curtains fall nicely. And then make sure that's all nice and flat there. And then put some more pins in here. Right, so what I'm now doing is I'm pinning in the sides so that we've got all the sides and the hem pinned in, ready to do all the herringbone work, which I'm gonna show you how to do. Very easy and some really good stitch, nice and strong a very professional looking curtain. I mean there are other stitches that you can do, um, like invisible ones, um, but I actually like the herringbone, so that's what I'm doing today. Well, I'm going to show you how to do the um, herringbone. So first of all you go into the fabric and interlining, but you don't you don't touch the actual outer fabric so you go in you can't see anything there's no needle coming through there and you pull it through pinch a little bit of the interlining through pull and back into the face fabric so you're now going to do like a little it'll be like a little cross so you'll sort of pull it through again and then through the fabric. So you're creating 
little crisscrosses sort of thing. This is Harry though. I'll carry on for a little bit so you can see. So you go under the fabric to hide your knot and then you come out to the edge where you want to start the sewing and then hold it together, go through like the little channel of fabric. So you don't need to go right the way through, just through the channel and then pick up another little piece through the channel. Try and keep them quite small because you don't really want them to be seen. This is a kind of invisible. And then again, come through the channel. Through this channel. Now my pet hate is getting a knotted cotton when you're on a mitre. That is one of my worst things when I'm doing curtains. I hate it. I mean, I hate getting knots anyway, but getting knots when you're on a mitre is really annoying because you've basically got to start again. Should be wearing my glasses here as well. Take that right to the end. Woo! Knots, knots, knot alert! And it's even worse when you get a knot right at the end when you normally finish the mitre. <laughs> right, so get to right to the end. And this is what I do when I get to the end. I just literally take a weeny piece on the other side and pull quite tight and then do it again over so I mean everyone does theirs oh look I've got a knot look. Hmm. exactly what I didn't want to happen that seems all right though oh no it is a knot can you hold it with the needle no you can't yeah see but I'm lucky because I've still got a fairly largish piece of cotton left See, this is what happens, it happens to all of us. Okay, so I've only done a couple, about three, and it looks really nice because it gives a nice crisp edge. And it's all sewn there. So I'm now going to just carry on along this side. I'm going to be doing the herringbone all the way around this curtain now. So it's all nice and um, secure. Um, so now we're doing the finish drop, which is 87. Now I did already press the finish drop in first. You get your interlining uh, and tuck it under a very tiny little bit. Um, you, you, you just need to catch it. You don't need to have loads of interlining coming down because it will just be bulky when you do your, um, your cleats. Right, so you do your 87 and then you pin that in place make sure you catch your interlining pin them so that the pin the end of the pin is away from you so that when you put your lining on you can easily take the pin out right so you carry on pinning where the crease line is i've already put the crease line in for the finished drop so you can see the crease line there you just fold that and then make sure the interlining is caught in that 
and I did that other pin the wrong way around but right so we've got a cotton sateen lining which is really pretty it's quite a light on this one now you always cut enough for hem um, and turn-ins at the top so I've allowed sort of about six inches for that because I've got four at the bottom and two at the top. So eight, seven, and then an extra six. So we turn up um, four inches and then I've given that a press. Okay. And then again, same as you did at the bottom with the face fabric, pull up, take the bottom of the lining to the crease. And it's probably a good idea to give that a press as well. It just keeps it all nice and neat and easy to manoeuvre. And then up again, so you've got a nice two inch hem. Right, so put the presser foot down, machine on. Now I usually go over my pins, but probably best not to if, you, if you've got a normal machine because they don't like it when you, you know, they don't like it when you go over them really. Machines, they don't like, you know, they break needles and things. So my pins are quite thin, they're quite, quite a small sort of pin. They don't tend to break the needle occasionally, very occasionally, but so obviously I can go much faster when I've got the pin in because it's holding it all together but I'll take that one out and do a hole just pull it from one side to the other just don't pull it too hard but just keep it nice and taut So nice and easy. So we're going to put the lining over the top. Same as what we did before really, just take it to the edge. Make sure we've got a three centimetre turning all the way around so we've got three at the bottom and three at the side um, and it gives us a really nice kind of like finish so we'll just sort of sew sort of here to here and then all the way up here and then we'll do the other side so that is left open like that but you have to sew at least I'd say 10 centimeters from the edge of the curtain I always do it to about there so I'm going to go and pin it all in and then I shall start sewing. Now you always pin from the corner. Like that. And then I usually put one just kind of here. Give me an eye, you know, so it's nice and flat there. So everything is all herring boned in. And it's all nice and secure. Right, so I've knotted my cotton. Leave your knot there. Make sure that's tucked under so you can't see it. And keep it nice and flat. And then go into the fabric and out where your, not your uh, cotton is. And just over sew that a couple of times just to give it a bit of strength on that edge there and then what we do is we go into the fabric now we're not going r right through we're going just through the interlining and we're coming out about I don't know a centimeter and a half um, so you've got no stitches coming out here keep these stitches fairly small Go in again, come out. Keep 
keep it nice and tight you know pull the thread fairly tightly not too tight but you know nice and strong so you've got a nice edge here that looks like an invisible stitch so this is what I call a slip stitch Now I'm going to go into the mitre, the left side of the mitre, and go under it a little bit and then come out about half a centimetre. So that's nice and secure right in the corner. And then carry on with your stitches about a centimetre and a half. You can make them smaller if you want, but don't make them any bigger. You want them to be what you want the curtain to be nice and securely sewn in. So keep going along here. I'll do a few more. These are the same stitches we did on our Roman blind, if you remember or teacups. So we've got a really nice hand-sewn interlined curtain that will look really lovely when it's all done. No stitches on this side because it's all locked in with the interlining. going to pin the top just I mean I've, it's all pinned already but I'm going to pin pin it so that the lining doesn't sort of flap about right I have to turn the curtain around top facing Right, so now we can undo these pins. Now that we've got it in position. And we're going to take out these because we're going to put the buckram in. So, right, so this is the buckram. It's a six inch buckram that I'm using. Just going to straighten this edge. I'm going to do it by eye, but you know, feel free to use a set square or a straight ruler or something. You know, just put the back in. Now, what you need to do is make sure you have it so that it's literally on the crease that you made when you did your finished drop. So, I'm just going to lay it all out so we know we've got enough. You just make sure you're on your crease. And finish drop. This fabric's quite hard to work with because it's got this sort of pattern. It's shiny and it's kind of not. It's not. Um, it's a man-made fabric. It's not. Um, you know, it's got no cotton or anything in it, so it's not very easy to manipulate. But I basically I'm making a kind of half mitre set up in the corner so the fabric will come onto here but um, sometimes you can do it like this as well which is just as nice and then in fact I might do it like this because I've got more fabric to play with and it doesn't fray but anyway what you do is you always start from the in the middle make sure that you've got a tiny little bit of interlining um, coming through don't don't have loads but don't have it so that it's not catching or you could 
lose your interlining. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give that, just pin that in place and work this way first. And make sure you've got your crease. Can you see your crease? Make sure if you turn it over, you've got your crease. So make sure your buckram is literally right up to that crease there, like that. Okay, catch, catch a little bit under there. Now what I'm going to do on the ends, I'm going to cut the interlining from the bottom of the buckram to the top out because it's too bulky and it's just not sitting nice. So if you cut it so that it's literally just down to the bottom of the buckram, up to the edge of the curtain, and then just take that bit out. So then it will just sit nice then and it will go in and a better mitre. So like for instance, like it will just sit nicer. Do you see what I mean? You've got a nicer kind of look there. Um, I'm just going to pop a pop a pin in there to keep it moving. Right, let's do the same the other side. Careful you don't cut any of the face fabric. Because that is not a good look. <laughs> right, so you go in again, you do your mitre. So you just fold it into like a little corner, like a little triangle and then fold it over really carefully so that you're bringing it all in so you've got a nice corner there. Let's just pop a pin there but that doesn't move for the minute. Right now we're going to do the, the secure the lining at the top now that the buckram is in. So what we're going to do is make sure that we've got our three centimetres going along and then we're going to cut the top just crease it like that and then you can see the line and then just go about I don't know half an inch from that crease line just take that off keep it nice and straight and whatever you do don't go into that crease line <laughs> start from the middle Always start from the middle and work your way out. And I leave about a centimetre from the top. Hold hold it, both of it together very tightly and securely so that this piece doesn't move because you don't want your buckram to move because it's not secure yet. And then put your pin in straight away. And then just work your way out. Centimetre allowance. Keeping your crease line. Keep moving the fabric down. If you haven't got a pin, just make sure you move it down so you can see your crease line. Right, so you take your pins out and then you carry on pinning. Make sure you push your, you know, make sure it's all nice and tight and it's all at the top before you pin it in. When you get to the end, fold over the top so you've got that in, that in, and make sure it's nice and straight, sort of here. Make sure you've got your three centimetres and it's all nice and straight there, along, along there. I'm going to take that out because once I pin that in, that will all kind of hold it anyway. But I will put a pin across because I've still got so from here where I started obviously I left it open a little bit to put the buckram in so I'm still going to have to sew down to there so I usually put a pin where I started so I know I've got to sew all along here and down to that pin so that gives me a, a guide so now I'm going to go from the middle outwards to this side again manipulate your fabric make sure your crease lines there your buckram's right at the top 
it just gives you so much more of a, of a professional finish if you do concentrate on that, you know. Pin out, make sure it's nice and flat and taut. And then pop your pin in. Now, if you want to make it really special, you can make sure you've got enough fabric to, you know, so that you can do three centimetres there and have it all mitered and sort of have it like that. Some people like it like that, but I'm not really fussed because you never see the top because it's all pleated up with your pinch pleats. But if you want to do that, you can just make sure you've got enough turning at the top to do it. So you can... Do whatever you like. Right, that's in. Now, what I did before was I left um, my cord hanging when I got to the end of here so that I could just continue round. So I'll just pop a pin there to hold it in place. And then that's nice and sort of, you know, ready to sew from there all the way across round to there, which I will do using the slip stitch method that I showed you earlier. Right, the way we do pinch pleats is that first of all we have to take the width of the fabric and I minus 136. Now I always take off um, five, well eight centimeters each side usually for returns which is 16 so you take that off the 136. Returns are used for what I would call ease so I take those out of the equation so bearing in mind you always have to have um, more spaces than pleats if you're taking your two returns out, that means that you're um, only going to, you're then going to have sort of like more pleats because you've taken two returns out instead of one. So you'll have, um, for instance, I'm doing five pleats, so you will have four spaces. Because if you imagine if you had four spaces plus your two returns, that's six spaces in total and you always have one more space than the pleat. So hence why we're doing five um, pleats. So I basically worked out that I'm covering um, an area of about 46 centimetres, which is where I'm just, I'm just sticking this curtain onto a pole in the shop. So it hasn't got to sort of like be closing anywhere or it's not really covering a, a, a vast area. It's just literally going to be a sample. So, but I am making it sort of um, 46 centimetres. So I've got my calculations worked out to be 17.8 um, for my pleat size and nine centimetres for my gap. Now, nine isn't uh, a normal gap size. Um, a normal gap size would be like 13 or 14 centimetres and pinch pleats you use um, double pinch pleats you usually use 18 centimetres rule of thumb those are the kind of uh, figures I usually work to I mean you know it could be bigger but we're only doing double pinch pleats so we're not like using too much fabric for the pleat and then we've got um, our spaces are 11.5 and there's going to be four of them so we go across if you've got a long, a very wide curtain, I would fold it in half and start from the middle, um, working out, you know, and then you can sort of pin up and down. You haven't got to sort of like pin all the way across, it's much easier. And I've stuck pins in here, but I mean, you you should really pin the bottom of the buckram until you've got these in place, because although you've sewn across the top, you haven't really locked your buckram in. Um, if you're using fusible buckram, that will obviously be handy because it's so sort of like when you iron it, it, it will stick to your fabric and lining. But I haven't used an awful lot of heat on this fabric because it's it, it's polyester. It's not very, I don't think it's going to be very good with the iron. So I'm not really going to put much heat on it. Right, so we've got it all pinned in. All the Pins are ready to pleat. The first pin and the second pin you marry together. As you can see there, you've got the two pins there. Right, so you marry them together and then go to the bottom of the buckram. 
in line with your pin and then put a pin in the bottom of the back one and that keeps it secure. Then you go to the next one, this one and this one, and you marry them together, those two. Make sure you take these out as you go if you have pinned at the bottom because you don't want to be stabbing your hand and you know with the pit with the pin because that's what I have quite often done and it hurts. <laughs> Occupational hazard pins. Next one. Top of them at each other. You have to get this quite accurate, this bit. So you don't want to be short with the width or anything. And so yeah, pins together. Make sure it's all straight along the top here. Put your pin at the bottom of the buckram. You can sort of feel it because it's quite a bit of cotton there. Yeah. Next one. So we've got five in total. So this is number four. So you just marry those together. Keep it nice and straight. And now we're ready to sew these in place. Now, uh, if you're doing this for the first time, I would get uh, an invisible pen. Obviously, one that goes invisible in, after a while, like an invisible marker is what I meant to say. And mark where you're gonna where you're gonna do your your seam along your pleat. And obviously, it's going to be sort of in line with your pin. This is sort of about eight centimeters. 7.8 um, all the way along and then just mark it every so often and follow that line. I mean, I won't because I've done this so many times, I, I just do it by eye. But I would do that because um, it's going to be quite tricky doing it for the first time and you don't want to sort of like go off and it, it's better to sort of have it marked. So we'll take this to the machine and I'll show you how to sew these in and how to pleat them in. Right, so we're at the machine. Um, what, I, what I do here is I get make sure it's all lined up and ready, take the back pin out and then I usually pin sort of that there because that's obviously in line with that one. Take that one out. Obviously I've been doing this a while so you know make sure you keep yours pinned as long as possible and mark them but you know basically I've gone in by about a centimetre, put my presser foot down and my needle down um, and I'm going to reverse back first, or just sort of literally go forward a tiny t a tad, go back straight away almost. That, and then forward again. Keep in line with my pin, or where it was. <laughs> and I can eye that and just come down. But this fabric is horrible. It's like, ugh, it's just, I know it's going to, it'll look lovely, but it's, you know, like here, it's moving. I'll take the pin out because I don't want to create a crease. And then I'll just go to here because that's where the bottom of the belt buckram is. And then just go back. Keep it very steady and slow. It's quite tricky when you first start doing it, but you know, once you have done it for a few times, you know. So I've sort of done it so that you've got you started right at the top. If it if you find it moves, unpick it, unpick it and do it again. That's why you should sort of come down and put your needle in sort of like about a centimetre down and then go back. Don't start from the top because it will move. I'm going to show you how you do your first pleat. You, so you do your first pleat by flattening it all out like this. So make sure you've got equal amount each side. Flatten it out and then fold it. Now, usually this bit, a lot of people stab stitch and I don't do that because I just find that a waste of time because you can get just as good a finish and look by doing it with your machine. Now, I don't know what sort of machines you have. Um, if you've got a domestic, you might not find that you could do this on your domestic sewing machine. So I would do it by hand. But if you've got um, a strong enough machine, what I do is I... You have to go in a little bit because you don't want any of the stitching to be shown 
on the front of the pleat. So I just go in and just kind of like very, very small stitches come out. And that is what it looks like. It's like a stab stitch. You can hardly see it. It's really strong because it's been done on the machine. You haven't hurt your fingers in the process. <laughs> now this bit here, which obviously you have to sew, sew this corner bit to here and then there to there. So it's all like really like caught. And then that'll be done. That'll be one pleat done. So I go along now, do all the pleats, stab stitch them there with the machine. These are all put together. I'm now going to put the, um, the hooks on. Now these are the hooks that we use for pinch pleats. And what we're gonna do is turn the curtain around so that it's on the lining side. Now the hook drop for this particular pole up there is about six centimeters. So what I'm gonna do from the top with a ruler, I'm gonna mark very gently a little six centimeter marking. Can't even see that. And then all the way along, mark your six centimeters so you can see. Now this is where your hook's gonna go, um, gonna be put in so that you've got the right hook drop and it all fits nicely. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the hooks in. I'll show you how they're done. So you put, um, you hold your fingers with your, your pleat. Now, be careful that you don't go all the way through because you don't want to see this hook on the other side of your curtain. So just kind of like feel for like the middle of it all and it, it will just go in and it shouldn't come through if you don't go too kind of like hard with it, you know? So just kind of feel again, hold your pleat like that and get your pin hook and then when you're pushing it in, lift it slightly up so you're not going to bury your pin in your hand or something because um, these are quite lethal and I have had myself with them before. Sometimes they're quite hard to put in as well. So you just go where your little dot is and then push it in. Sometimes you have to go like that with that finger to move it a bit because it doesn't always want to doesn't always want to move. <laughs> And then we do another one where the line is, where the little dot is rather. And the final one is here. Sometimes you have like 30 of these, you know, you're going along and you've got absolutely masses of pleats and the curtains are massive and, and sometimes your fingers can get really, I mean, look, already I've got little dents. So they are quite tricky to put in, but once they're in, they do, these curtains will look beautiful because the heading just looks so nice. So now we're going to put it up. That is your curtain, all nice and thick. Um, and then that's the back when you've got your, your nice hand sewn stitches along the top, along the sides rather. 
and then you can sort of like um you know like push it together like like leah's doing here yeah like that and then just tie it back and it just looks really nice